Hi guys, good evening and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host Eddie and in tonight's video I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and super good episode of Ahsoka, which is episode 4, which dropped last night, but I was rather busy last night so I finally had a chance to watch it uh, just a few short minutes ago. Really enjoyed it. Before I get into all of that, of course, please be warned, this is a spoiler-filled review, so if you're not caught up on Ahsoka by the latest, most recent episode, which is episode 4, uh, you don't want to keep watching or listening as I will be go excuse me going into spoilers plot details character stuff all that jazz that being said you have been warned let's dive right back into it so first and foremost a uh, super exciting episode we got some awesome on the ground action sequences where it was Ahsoka and Sabine versus uh, Morgan's men and the assassin droid who had a pretty cool little fight with Hu Yang, who can really handle himself in a confrontation. You know, hats off to that old ass droid. You know, he did a great job holding up against that assassin droid till Ahsoka and Sabine showed up. You know, it was a very entertaining sequence. You have two badass warriors going at it against a small army, basically, taking out all of Morgan's men and then running off to go uh, find the map and stop the two Siths. Or at least the two former Jedi who are now acting like Sith. Because I'm, I'm still not sure how to quite label them. Pretty cool fight between uh, Shin and Sabine. And pretty cool fight between Ahsoka and Balon. You know, it's like we had the two older characters go at each other. And the two younger, less experienced characters go at each other. It was like master versus master. Apprentice versus apprentice. And then we got to see the return of a beloved fan favorite character from the Mandalorian make an appearance. Captain Carson Teva. Who was the rebel pilot Sahara was speaking to when they were forming up their fighter squadron around around the ghost right before they jumped to hyperspace. Thankfully, he was one of the few pilots who survived uh, after the uh, ship uh, took off in the hyperspace ring thing, as did Hera and her son and Chopper in the ghost. But uh, Carson survived as well after the hyperspace ring thing uh, took off for hyperspace. And apparently Balin destroyed the map so nobody can follow them or know exactly where they're going. And now Sabine is seemingly stuck aboard said ship with all the bad guys. While Ahsoka was supposedly on the planet down below on one of the landing on one of the rocks. But when she wakes up, she's in the world between worlds. And the world between worlds, for those of you who are unaware, is a, a state of existence that ex exists between time and space that was established in Star Wars Rebels. And it's kind of allows for a certain level of time travel to occur or moments of time open up where a character can insert themselves into that period of time or something like that. I may not be explaining it correctly. The point is that is how she's able to see the long awaited reunion we were hoping to get in this show. And of course it only lasted for a few seconds, but I'm sure the next episode will make up for it tremendously. A long awaited live action reunion between Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka. Not Darth Vader, but Anakin Skywalker, as played by the one and only Hayden Christensen, is back, everybody. What a treat it was to see him play that character again, once again, after all this time. Well, technically, we did see him do it recently, about a year ago, when they dropped the Obi-Wan Kenobi miniseries. So, he was great in that, too. But, boy, it was exciting to see him and live-action Ahsoka face-to-face -face with each other after all these years. So, that was a real treat and a hoot. So, a very exciting exciting, very uh, action-packed episode, which really upped the stakes. Ahsoka ending up in the world between worlds somehow, despite getting kicked off that rocky cliff. Sabine getting stuck with all of our bad guys who have now set a course for Grand Admiral Thrawn, destroying the map in the process so that nobody can possibly know where they're going or follow them for that matter. So how the hell they're going to get back? Actually, they probably can get back to the Star Wars galaxy pretty easily. I know people are freaking out or having their minds blown that there's other another galaxy out there, but frankly, it kind of makes sense and it wasn't a huge shocker to me. It was an interesting twist, but it wasn't like a <gasps> mind-blowing thing to me. I was like, yeah, it's a big universe out there. I'm sure there are a lot of galaxies, so I'm not surprised at all. That's where uh, Thrawn and hopefully Ezra are. 
but um, I guess time will tell. But I really enjoyed this episode. It was very action-packed, very exciting. Um, all the characters had moments to shine throughout. And, of course, that awesome but sadly cliffhanger of an ending showing Anakin and Ahsoka reuniting in the live action after all these years. It was a real full circle moment, I think, for a lot of people and a lot of fans. So I was very pleased with that. As brief as it was, but I'm sure we will get much, much more Anakin in the next episode next week. So what did you guys think of this episode? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you expecting more, expecting less? Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments section. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Ahsoka drops new episodes every Tuesday on Disney+. Plus. We're already halfway through this, the show, guys. Can you believe that? Only four more episodes to go but as we have seen a lot can happen in one episode so i'm sure there's a lot more good stuff to come have a great rest of your night everyone thanks for watching and of course until next time may the force be with you